Hey guys, Richard Holdner here. How much do the 4.3 liter iron L99 heads flow? You know, the L99, the little LT1. If the LT1 is the other guy's small block Chevy, the L99 is the other guy's LT1. So we have the other guy's other guys. Let's take a look. In this video, we're gonna take a look at a ton of testing on the 4.3 liter L99, you know, the baby LT1, the other guy's LT1. We airflow tested the L99 head, the LT1 head, and the LT4 head. In addition to that, I also measured the valve sizes and combustion chamber. Now, not the combustion chamber volume, but the combustion chamber diameter to find if that big diameter combustion chamber was actually gonna overhang the small bore. The final thing I did was actually install the heads to find out if the big valve heads would actually fit on the small bore motor. Did it work? Let's find out. Stock intake valve measures 1.84 on the L99 and a stock exhaust. 1.5, so you got 1.84 and 1.5. Another important measurement in addition to chamber volume is going to be chamber, the maximum width of the chamber. So we're looking at 1.72, somewhere around there, 1.715, 1.725, somewhere in that range, and it's quite a bit smaller than either the LT1 or the LT4. Finally got the L99 heads off of our 4.3 liter V8, the baby LT1. I have the iron heads up on the flow bench. We're gonna flow test them and see how they compare to the LT1 and to the LT4. Let's flow those babies. That's a 500 lift. Now we gotta reset our scaling, but seems like it's working pretty well. Move down to a different test scale because we're flowing a lot less air now. Yeah, flow test, L99. Time to flow the exhaust on the L99 iron head.
Okay, guys, here's the data that you guys have been waiting for. It's a comparison between the three LT1-based heads, and I know I left out the iron LT1 heads that are supposed to flow a little bit more, but the three that I had access to, obviously, we had the iron L99 heads from the 4.3 there that we've done all the testing with so far. I also had a set of aluminum LT1 heads and a set of aluminum LT5 heads. So not only did I airflow test them, but I checked them all on the 4.3 meter block after I removed the L99 heads to find out if they would fit, to find out the the larger valve sizes, especially the one we were concerned with, obviously, was the LT4 with its two inch valve. We wanted to find out if that would physically fit. So we were able to install the head on there and actuate the valves to find out if they all fit. But let's take a look at the flow, flow data first and find out how all that stuff compares. On our L99 head, first of all, they're iron compared to the aluminum of the LT1 and the LT5. And as I said, we know that we have the, also the iron LT1 heads. And we could have tested those, but I unfortunately I haven't picked up one of those motors from the wrecking yard yet. But on the L99 head, I removed that from our test motor. And we put it up on the flow bench. And it actually flowed fairly well, um, especially given the fact that it has a 184 intake valve and a 1.5 exhaust valve. It shares the exhaust valve size with the LT1. It has a smaller intake valve, and I'm gonna go ahead and change this a little bit. Oh, actually, eh, we'll just leave it the way it is. <laughs> you guys can see, I put a slash there instead of a period, it's fine. Um, so on the L99 head, we had the peak flow at 500 lift, which it kind of goes together with the others too. There was actually a drop in flow on both the LT1 and the LT4 as we went up from 500 valve lift to 600 valve lift. And when I first did the video, when I did the live video of flow testing the head, I wasn't able to get past 500 lift on the L99. What I had to do was disassemble everything <laughs> and reconfigure it. Um, I had to remove the valve seal and then reconfigure it so that we could depress the valve farther and we, we were able to go to 600 valve lift without the valve seal in place. And when we did that, the flow actually went down. It didn't go down a lot, but it went down by about 8 CFM from a, a peak of 197 to 189. Now, I didn't flow test these at 550 lift, so it would be interesting to see if the flow, if the peak flow actually increased between 500 and 600 lift. But again, that might be another airflow test for another day. The other thing that I wanted to do that I mentioned in the video, in the previous video, is I wanted, these were all flowed on a four inch bore fixture. Now I also wanted to flow them on the smaller bore fixture that we had to find out if there was a drop, but some of this is just <laughs> available time when I was down there doing the K24 stuff. You know, you're working until from seven in the morning till midnight or whatever. It's hard to get all of this stuff done before it's time to leave. So I was able to flow test all of these these three heads, flow them all on the four inch bore fixture. I might have to take a look and see if I flow them again to find out what the drop and flow is on the smaller bore fixture. So let me know if you guys want me to do that and then I'll, <laughs> I'll see if I can't go through another uh, you know, flow test regiment here on these things. But if we take a look at the flow numbers, we see that the, not surprisingly, the smaller 184 intake valve, if you compare all the intake flow, the L99 flowed 197, and the LT1 head flowed 207, and the LT4 head flowed the most, which is not surprising. Got the biggest valve. Um, it's a, and I think that that's a raised port too as well. So 239 on the LT4 head, which is pretty good. And if you take a look at the other data that's out there, I think that there's a bunch of people who have flowed these heads and posted numbers on them. They work pretty well. Um, you can take a look at um, Myron's book. I think I have to. I think I've got a copy of one of these. Yep. So if we take a look. Um, Myron's book on uh, LT1 and LT4 stuff. They've got some flow data, not just of the stock stuff, but of some ported stuff that they did there at TPIS and some other aftermarket stuff. So they've got a lot of flow data on airflow research stuff and Brodix heads and all kinds of things. There's, there's a lot of good information in there. Um, one of the things that I did was flow all of these heads, I flow the intake and the exhaust. And that's where I kind of ran into a problem. And I want to talk to you guys about that. Um, in looking at the intake flow data all looks like it, it correlates with what I would expect. The exhaust flow data on the L99 head looks very, very low to me. And it almost makes me want to revisit it. If I do put this thing up again, if I do put these heads up again, I'm definitely going to reflow the exhaust because it just seems like the exhaust flow on the L99 is really low relative to the other heads. They all flowed about what I expected to. And those all correlate kind of with all of the other data that's available out there and kind of what I expected having flowed, you know, I don't know, 40 or 50 different small block heads. I've got a lot of data to look at it. And those are all those are all kind of right what I would expect. But the L99 head um, is very low, has very low exhaust flow. 
So if I reflow it and verify that, and that, that, that actually is the case, it would surprise me since it has the same size exhaust valve. And the other thing I want to do is, if that is the case, I'm then going to look a little bit further into the exhaust and maybe I'm going to CC the exhaust port to find out if the L99 port is actually physically smaller or shaped differently than an LT1, which it shares that exhaust valve with. So it'll be interesting information. But if we assume that this that the, at that exhaust flow data is correct, we can then look at the flow relationships between the intake and the exhaust flow of the different heads. And on the L99, it had the lowest percentage of intake to exhaust flow was only 69%, and the LT1 was highest at 78%, and then the LT1 was kind of in the middle there between the two. Um, even though it had the most uh, intake flow, it didn't have a bunch more exhaust flow than the um, than the LT1 did. So what that points to is if that's all that if all of that's accurate, that it's possible that these different cylinder heads would respond well to different cam timing based on that exhaust flow relationship. So that might be something to think about and something we might look for in our next testing when we start doing more cams on the L99. So the last thing I want to talk about uh, is the chamber diameter and not, not just the, we know that the chamber size is differently of these different cylinder heads, but the diameter. So if you take a look at the widest part, the widest part of the um, combustion chamber, you see that not only is the L99 does it have a small chamber, but it's but it's like physically smaller. The diameter is a lot smaller. So at 3.72 inches um, across on that combustion chamber, it's obviously a lot smaller than the LT1 or the LT4, which might lead to valve shrouding, if it, especially if it didn't have. So if you're trying to stick a big valve in that, that might not be a good way to go on the L99 because those walls are going to be really, really close to the valve. Um, the other measurement that I want to make that I didn't put in here is that I want to I want to raise the valve up through the lift range and I want to measure the distance between the edge of the valve and that chamber wall to find out if it is indeed shrouded, even though it has that smaller valve. But that's an interesting dimension because what it means is if we do put these heads, uh, and by the way, the LT1 and the LT4 head both went on the L99. I was able to actuate the valves. The valves do not hit the side, do not hit the chamber, so we don't have to notch the, the side of the, the chamber um, to make the valve fit. All of those seem to fit. I don't know that I would run an LT4 head on there anyway, because I don't think it needs that in this particular case. But they all fit. So, But what I would want to find out is that, that this dimension, the size of these chambers, tells us that the, these chambers are definitely going to overhang the bore size, um, all but obviously the L99. They will all overhang the bore size on this small bore 4.3 liter. So this is all information <laughs> for you guys to take in. I think we have enough flow from that stock head, obviously, to make a lot more power. If we use that number and use our calculations, that thing will support almost 400 horsepower. So we're nowhere near that with our with our current testing. Now, obviously, we're going to try the tune port manifold, which the guys at TPIS are modifying so we can bolt that thing on. We're going to try some different camshafts. Um, we're going to try ported heads. So we've got a lot of cool stuff coming up on that. And also let me know, this is another way to go. Besides modifying a tune port intake manifold with a bolt pattern to go on the LT1 head, the other way to go, and it opens up more intake uh, availability for us on the LT1, is we can actually modify a small block head. We can modify the, the water port, basically, on the bottom of the head to work, get a traditional small block head to work on an LT1 block because they obviously they have different water passages. But if we can make a standard uh, small block head work on the LT1 block, then we can put almost any small block intake manifold on there and have a lot more intake manifolds that we could then test on our LT1. So let me know if you want, if you'd like to see something like that. Um, obviously that's a different route than modifying the intake manifold. We're definitely going to modify the tune port intake manifold to work on the LT4 head or on the, rather on the L99 head and probably on a modified LT1 head. But as I said, the other direction is to go down that path and, and turn it into more of a traditional small block heavy. So let me know if you guys would like to see that or if that just throws the LT1 stuff all off. Let's get to our conclusion. Okay guys, what'd you think about the airflow testing and all of the other data generated on our L99 4.3 liter 
baby LT1. I'll tell you what, I get as excited about doing this kind of airflow testing and looking at all this other data as I do getting dyno data. See, this is the preliminary stuff. You have to find out if this stuff works before we can even put it on the dyno because if the heads don't fit, we can't run a test on them. The thing that I liked about this is we got good airflow data on all three heads. We also found out that all of the heads actually fit on the small bore L99, even the big valve LT4 stuff. What this tells us is, is that I don't have to port the L99 heads to increase the power output. I can rely on a set of ported aluminum LT1 heads with that 194 valve. I don't think I need to go up to a two inch valve because I think that that's still gonna be shrouded. But if I run a 194 valve, ported LT1 head, we can make some serious power from our little L99. That also allows us to run different intake manifolds. And I also want to try the following thing. We're going to run the tune port manifold. I'm going to run more nitrous. We're going to run a supercharger. I want to run eventually, obviously, turbos on this thing and find out how much power we can actually make. Thanks for watching, guys. I'm Richard Holder. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff. I'll keep testing.